Member for Saanich North End Islands. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. To hear the Minister of Health to suggest that we've come through a pandemic is actually uh, pretty distressing. I think we're still in a pandemic, uh, Mr. Speaker. Nearly a million British Columbians. Uh, Shh, members. Hard reality, but it is the reality. Continue. Nearly a million British Columbians do not have a family doctor. Our health care system is on the brink, and our Premier wants to blame everyone else for uh, their failed policies. And it's about to get worse, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, because uh, the NDP government is pretending that there is not this, large threat, uh, this threat of large corporations who are poised to disrupt the primary health care system. They're pretending like that doesn't exist. You know who's taking action on the primary health care uh, crisis that we're facing? Tell us. They're taking action. And they don't want uh, to talk about this part of their so-called uh, uh, social capitalist enterprise, uh, but they are charging $3,900 a year for their Life Plus program. Uh, Don Copeman, well, he's back, uh, this time with Harrison Healthcare Clinics, opening soon in uh, Vancouver and uh, in Victoria. And well, uh, tell us buries their fees. Harrison's just open about their, quote, private health care fees, end quote, even calling their highest level of service the premier service. $4,900 a year to start for the first year. $3,900 every year after that for adults. Teens and young adults, $1,600. Children, $675 for my family to get uh, to become a member of this exclusive club, $10,000 a year. Mr. Speaker, the Government of Canada's website says that the Canada Health Transfer Funds, quote, have at times been withheld for violations of the Canada Health Act in relation to extra billing and user charges, end quote. My question, Mr. Speaker, is to the Premier. We have a corporation charging British Columbian fees for access to longitudinal primary health care. So how can he expect the federal government to step up and give us more cash when he's allowing this kind of exploitation in our province? Minister of Health. Well, um, Honourable Speaker, um, there we have laws, the Medicare Protection Act in BC, and those laws will be enforced. And we, in this, in, on this side of the House, brought into place measures that have been passed in the legislature in 2003 but never proclaimed. Uh, in addition, we've taken specific action to ensure a whole sector of health care, which is diagnostics, has changed profoundly in BC, such that we went from 174,000 MRIs in 2016-17 to 260,000 last year. We didn't do... Whether, whether it's members, us, members, same with Minister same of the with CT I'll tell you. Uh, I'll tell you. Members, Minister will continue. Uh, Honourable Speaker, uh, with respect to the Canada Health Act and the Medicare Protection Act, which is our responsibility in this legislature, they will be enforced in British Columbia. But the areas of health care that are growing in primary care, those are primary care networks. That's public. That's 53 of them, including in the member's constituency. That's urgent and primary care centers. That's public. That's community health centers, which had been stuck in the mud for a generation in BC. New community health centers contro controlled by nonprofit organizations in communities. So with respect to everyone, the rules and the law will apply. And those are the actions the government's taking to ensure this generation of public health care improves life for everyone in BC. Member for Sandwich North and Island Supplemental. In my riding, we have a clinic with 24 doctors fundraising for overhead. We have a uh, we have an emergency room. Uh, who, the, an emergency department expanding a $10 million project, 30% of it contributed by local government, 70% of it committed by uh, the fundraising of uh, the hospital foundation. That's what's happening in my riding. A clinic with 24 doctors fundraising for overhead. 
This week, the Premier and the Minister of Health were pressed on their policies, their failed health care policies, and the Premier stood in this chamber and swore at a member in this, of this House. In an interview, the Premier shifts blame for his failed policies on the federal government, complaining about Canada health transfers, pointing fingers, uh, well, clearly not pointing fingers, well, clearly uh, pointing fingers, Mr. Speaker. Then the Premier has the temerity to again shift responsibility in a Vancouver uh, Sun article saying it's not his problem, it's a BC problem, it's a Canada problem. These are just distractions, useful distractions, Mr. Speaker, from the issue that nearly a million British Columbians are seized with at this moment. The Premier is great at distracting. Members, the erosion of health care has been a growing issue over decades in this province, as the Minister of Health said. However, this Premier has been in that seat for five years now, for five years now, and we've seen fewer people with a family doctor, more corporations develop, uh, delivering primary health care, and more services being forced to fundraise to stay afloat. My question through you, Honourable Speaker, is to the Premier. When is he going to stop? Shifting, and point, shifting blame and pointing fingers for his failed policies and take responsibility for the mess that his government is making on this equitable, universal, primary health care system in our province. Minister of Health. Uh, Honourable Speaker, I'm uh, disappointed that the members seem to be suggesting in his first question that we should not be advocating for increases in the Canada health transfer. He will know that the federal government contributes currently 22 percent, 22 percent of health care costs in Canada on what it needs to be a shared cost program. And all uh, members, <laughs> Minister, uh, thank you. And he will know that an increase in the Canada health transfer are absolutely necessary in this country for the long-term sustainability of public health care. And the Premier, the Premier is advocating for that, as he should, as the previous Premiers did, and as they should have. And so, Honourable Speaker, when the member calls that an irrelevancy, the fundamental underpinnings of the public health care system in Canada, that is incorrect. That is, that is incorrect. With, res with respect to TELUS, we've answered this question in the House uh, previously, and so uh, I, I suggest that uh, the member uh, take a look at that response. I have ensured that that issue be referred to the Medical Services Commission. That's how we inform, that's how we enforce the law in British Columbia. We referred it to the Medical Services Commission and uh, the issue in question to ensure that everyone in BC is acting in compliance with the law. But what we have to do is take action. What did the members learn last night at their town hall meeting? We need to use nurse practitioners more. We doubled the number of nurse practitioners. We need more community health centers. We increased the number of community health centers. We need. We need primary care networks to expand team-based care across the province. That's precisely what we've done in his constituency, in his leader's constituency, and everywhere else in BC. Thank you.